into the Phoenix Sports Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. As always, I am your host, Michaela Perkins, and joining me today is Craig Morgan and Sup? Derek Montia. Hey, Derek. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? I'm Great. All right. Good. Just came from practice. Yes, all you good? did. We'll get to that in a second. But before the show started, Craig and I just found out something <laughs> incredible. This is in common. Wild. Um, hi, mom, in the comments. Um, hey, that reminds mom. me, if you guys are watching on Twitter, head over to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and join us in the comments. This episode is going to be so fun. So we definitely want to hear from you guys. We want your opinions and your thoughts. So come join us in the chat on YouTube. Say what's up. Say hello. Let us know you're there. As always, we'll read your comments on air. Um, so anyway, Craig and I just found out that we are both mutually terrified of goats. Yes. And I have never felt more understood and seen in my entire life than I have right now, <laughs> knowing that happened, somebody else way. is also terrified of goats because people think I'm insane when I say that I'm scared of goats, but I really truly am terrified. Like I will cry on sight if I there's a goat. I don't feel like these people are woke, to be honest, if they don't understand <laughs> that you. goats are evil. How are All goats you have to not look scary? Look into their dead eyes. Their and you dead know rectangle red. eyes. Thank you. What exactly. the heck is up with I don't that? What is going on? It's a, <laughs> It's a, an abomination of nature. Is it I is. Call it yeah, it so. is not natural to look like that. It's terrifying. I was at Festivus last night in downtown Phoenix, and there was a very lovely goat no, that came up. No, they're not lovely. It was dressed as a reindeer. Goats uh, are not someone lovely. Someone had it on a leash. It was fine. Matt, really can we fun. talk Demon's about the fun. fact that people use goat to describe the greatest of all time, too? By the way, I've Why? never used the term because... It's just a disconnect. I think it's there for insulting. Me. If you yeah. Google Satan, pictures of goats pop up. So I mean, As I guess should. we're calling people goats and Satan now in the same time. Well, that that is that is kind of an annoying term that came up. Like, like I'm I hate to make it sound like I'm a young person because I'm not, but it's like weird when you're like I remember before that term existed. I remember when people started using it, and I had to look it up because I didn't know why people were calling people goats. So yeah, that's uh, that's one of those kind of scenarios as your... far as that became okay. Yeah, we're gonna go. Origin yeah. stories here. Where does this Let's come go. from? All right. Well, we know about the curse of the Billy Goat with the Cubs anyway. My grandmother was a huge Cub fan, and she told me about it when I was very young. Yeah. In kindergarten, I was on a field trip to a petting zoo because who doesn't go to a petting zoo on their right. kindergarten uh -huh. field okay. trip? Okay, right? this is not starting to sound and, familiar. Yeah. Okay, so we have our name tags to you know keep track of us. I, I don't know why do you need a name tag? I guess if you get lost, like. They can see, oh, your name's Craig because you can't tell them. I don't know why we wore the name tags, to be maybe, honest, because I could speak at that point. Maybe. I could have told them my name. Anyway, I'm wearing this, like, basically, like, a, a three by five card with that says Craig on it. And it's attached around my neck with a piece of purple oh, no. yarn, oh, thick no. purple yarn. Sure. So I go in. I'm, I'm petting various animals. And I really don't remember any of those because the the experience that I had that shaped my life <laughs> came when I went indoors to the, I don't know, what do you call them, a goat pen? And I approached this goat with the aforementioned dead-looking eyes, the black eyes, yeah. evil eyes. Yeah. Oh, no. And it grabbed a hold of my name tag and started eating it because goats eat everything. Yeah. They consume everything yeah, yeah. like Satan. They just yeah. consume everything. And drew me in. God. But the yarn was so strong. Yeah. It was surprisingly I know the, I know the strong. Yarn you're talking so about. So I'm getting sucked into the goat's mouth and it oh, wouldn't no. let go. So... Ever and he since doesn't then, care because the goat would eat you is what you're that's is what where I thought was at. coming right. next. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when he ran out of card, what was sure. next? What was, what, was, next? what was in line? Your face. Yeah, so. um, I also had a traumatic experience with a goat at a petting zoo. So See? we are of kindred spirit. Right. Craig what, and I wait, are wait, the same. This story. is wild. I, I, oh, well, God. I was going to ask you, is that like because of the curse of the Billy Goat? Was that something that children in general in Chicago are feel, <laughs> fearful of question, ghosts. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to we should probably do a poll of children in Chicago, yeah, although yeah. it comes up since one, so maybe yeah. it would be it's gone my now, generation but... that we need to poll. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, that would um, be great. We were at, so I'm from Colorado. We went to the Royal Gorge, which is like this, like, touristy attraction the royal gorge is like a big canyon it's like a mini grand canyon okay. yeah. um and they have like a train that goes down through there they like build like a little amusement park there's like a whole little thing out there and they also have a petting zoo and i forget how old i was but um we went into this petting zoo at the royal gorge and there were obviously goats in there and there was just this one like angry asshole goat that just like was having a really bad day and he was just mean and i was in the goat and i was in the pen with a goat and he started like stomping his foot and like rearing up to like charge and his little all he could see was his little horns coming see, at horns me too, satan again satan. Satan. Mm -hmm. and i i cried it was terrifying he was making these horrendous noises <sighs> that like oh god i just they're 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 scary they're terrifying animals yeah. um not a fan 
I don't Anyways. have any traumatic experiences. Um, Derek with has never also. been traumatized nope. by a ghost. Nope. They've, been, so. they've been pretty nice to me. No, oh my god, Leah, don't know. Oh. <laughs> Look how adorable oh he's so is. Sorry. He's so yeah, he's this a disguise. Horrendous. It's clearly a disguise. <laughs> clearly. That is That's horrendous. A monster right I there. hate yep. everything about that. Um, all, right. all right, let's get started with the Valley Sports temperature check. <laughs> I think we need to. Oh, come on, Leah. <laughs> Leah's stop. too distracted by the goat. Oh yeah. it is a I got a feeling we're going to see more goats on yeah. this show. Um, oh this my is, God, no. I will fire Leah if that is. This whole goats on show is going to be cursed. This now. is off the rails. All right. Um, okay. Craig, you kind of already mentioned it. You rolled right in from Coyote's practice yep. that you were just there. I know that there's a little bit of a COVID issue going on. What yeah. is the latest that you have on the Coyotes yeah. and COVID? Lawson Krause and Jay Beagle are both in the protocols. Jay Beagle is, of course, out of the lineup right now, injured. So, like, add insult to injury for that poor guy yeah. who's been dealing with it all season. They've had a few other cases earlier this season. I'm trying to remember Johan Larson, Andrew Ladd were a couple of the guys that were in the protocols. But, you know, this this latest announcement comes after a wave of announcements around the league. Like, yeah. Monday and Tuesday were insane in the NHL. Calgary's yeah. basically shut down. Yep. I talked to Edmonton Oilers coach Dave Tippett. He's isolated in his house mm. just can't go out and so the, and the teams in canada are going at 50 percent reduced capacity right now, a, a right? number of teams now are, are talking about fielding lineups with less than a full complement of forwards it's insane i don't know where it's going i don't know if we're going to get to the point where we have a pause and then there's the olympics of course like right. can, can you imagine can the teams the score going... afford even a pause at this point <sighs> i don't know because we have that three-week olympic break and if they don't go some people thought well maybe we can make up games there but right. logistically it's impossible because these arenas are booked, this, so you can't make it up. This feels like March 2020 all over yeah. again, right? I mean, this yeah. all started because, you know, it, it didn't happen all of a sudden. But then once we got to a point that, you know, venues started reducing capacity and things like that, it seemed like that transcended over to everything, right? Not just big sporting events, but smaller, you know, restaurants, everything, you know. Well, and the then, NBA is also having a really big issue with COVID right now, too. The Kings are in advanced COVID protocols right now. Um, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but it just, it feels very reminiscent mm. of uh, yeah, it sucks. March 2020, Yikes. 2019, 2020, 2020, 2020. Yep. 2020. We lost Ooh. that whole 2020 year. It's hard to even remember. I know. I can't keep track anymore. <laughs> um, okay. So two players right now in yeah. COVID protocol. But there will be more testing. They're flying to Anaheim at three o'clock. So today, they are so still traveling. Yeah, they're still traveling. Okay. And then they'll, they're going to have more testing in the morning and we'll see if more guys come down with it. And then you evaluate from there because the rest of this road trip. Yeah is Vancouver and Seattle not an area of the world that you want to be going right now with what they're dealing with. So definitely not. Plus the border crossing, right? Yeah. That is yeah. not great news, but hopefully everything turns out okay and they can finish up that road trip. Uh, they did play the Rangers last night. Uh, they unfortunately lost. They are now on a six game losing skid. Uh, any positive takeaways from last night's game, Craig? <laughs> the, the thing about last night's game is that I, I thought the Coyotes deserved to win. Yeah, I really did. Listen, they can't score no. and they're, they're not going to score all season. They just don't have finishers. And Leah and I have talked about this on the show a lot where you can say the Coyotes outchanced another team, but it feels like they need to outchance those teams two to one yeah. in order to have a chance to win because they just don't have the finishers. But last night they played really well. Clayton Keller scores midway through the third period. You'd think, okay, they might win this game. And then I thought two very questionable calls by the officials late in that game. Turn the tables. Uh, New York scored on back-to-back uh, -back power plays and won the game late. And I, I don't think either of those uh, – the the interference call on Phil Kessel I don't think was a good call at all. And the too many men in the ice, it was it was close. I'm not sure you make that call yeah. in a tie game that late. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even despite the rough calls, like you were saying, the Coyotes at least remained competitive throughout most of the game. Um, through 28 games, now they're sitting at 5-21-2 and two on the season. Yeesh. They are dead last in the NHL with only 12 points. Craig, yeah. <laughs> where do you see this season going for the Coyotes? Do you uh, have them finishing in dead last? I do. Okay. All the, right. It's, you know, we were talking about this on the show last night. It's, it's increasingly become a two team race. I mean, yeah. the other teams, like if they go up and lose to Seattle again, yeah. well, they beat Seattle last time, but if they lose to them, you're going to see like this 10 point spread develop between Everybody in the Coyotes, except for the Montreal Canadiens, who I said at the beginning of the season, even though they went to the cup final last year, were not a playoff team, but I didn't think they'd be just abjectly bad like they are yeah. now. They've had some injuries. Carey Price is out. Shea Weber's out. But they're horrible. They can't win. So it, it's going to be... 
it looks like it's going to be a two team race for that top lottery spot. And see, that's the that's the sad part about it is that they're they're as bad as they are due to injury. Mm-hmm. Seattle is obviously a brand new team, but they're still trying hard. And you know, this Coyotes organization was just like, yeah, we're going to be the worst right out of the gate intentionally, before they even, yes. intentionally before they yeah. even took the ice. You know, so like at at the very least, they're they're succeeding at being bad, being right? Bad, yeah. and, and listen, which is I, what their I, goal was. But Matthew. actually, I have a question about that, though. Yeah. With everything that's going on with, like, the arena uncertainty, them only being having 12 points and just being god-awful, do you think that that's, like, affecting the players? Like, is morale low right now? Because you spend probably the most time with them outside of the actual organization. Yeah. And so you probably have a good beat on Team Morale. Do you have any insight on that? I don't think they'll admit it publicly, but I think so. It's got to okay. be. Listen, coaches and players don't want to lose. No matter what the organization's doing – those guys are wired to win, yeah. wired to compete. And when you when you take the ice and know your chances are just awful every night, yeah, it wears on you. And I think I've, I've written about this. Like when you when you look at the older guys that they brought in that are on one year contracts, okay, they're they're at the end of their rope anyway. So maybe it's not a big deal. They won't be here next year anyway. Yeah. And then you have the young guys that are just happy to be in the NHL. So okay, I'll deal with this. But that middle core of guys, mm-hmm. Jacob Chikrin, Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz, Lawson Kraus, Christian Fisher. They're basically giving up a couple, two, three years of their prime yeah. with no chance to win. That's a really hard situation to be in. Yeah, it's a tough pill to yeah, swallow for sure. Um, speaking of Craig's articles, make sure you go subscribe to gophnx.com. That is how you get access to all of Craig's extremely well-written pieces. Derek also writes, and you can read all of his great stuff about the Diamondbacks and the lockout and everything going on with Major League Baseball. If you sign up for an annual membership, you get a free T-shirt. Our T-shirts are the coolest. Um, None of us are wearing them right now, but (laughs) if you go check them out on PHNX Locker, you can see all of our shirts. And you'll also get access to our members-only Discord, which we are all in. We chat with uh, Craig and Leah, talk with Coyotes fans during Coyotes games. Uh, The (laughs) Diamondbacks is it's a little slow right now, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. to be expected. You know, people check in. <laughs> um, but PHNX is <laughs> a family, you. and we want you to be a part of our family. So go subscribe to gophnx.com and join the fam. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just skip over the Diamondbacks because literally nothing is happening in baseball Speaking right now. Speaking of teams at the bottom I, of the I want to say this because this <laughs> oh. is actually news, I think. Okay. Um, okay. And and it's it's like Seinfeld. It's news about nothing. It's There's so little going on in regards to the lockout. That uh, according to an article by Stephanie As- uh, Epstein on Sports Illustrated, two people familiar with the process entering Thursday, uh, the league and the union have not met since the collective bargaining <laughs> that's agreement oh, expired. That's the they have not even <laughs> oh talked. There is no. So like the one thing that is coming yes. out for an article on The Athletic is that the sides aren't expected to discuss the game's core economic structure until sometime in january sure after that's, the new year right right and that's not even addressing the real collective bargaining agreement you know the the other things that they nice. want to address as far as expanding the playoffs i mean they had this ridiculous thing where they didn't want to make you know basically free players free agents with the team that they join or drafted by until they're 29 and a half years old essentially like after their peak has come and gone Good i think Lord. as an athlete so there's a lot of things in there that they just seem so far apart on that if you're saying they are not even going to get to the core economic structure of the deal until sometime in January, how I, there's no way that this isn't going to impact right. the season starting. What's the over under on a startage of season? Uh, that's a good <laughs> question because here's the thing. Pitchers and catchers report in mid February, right? Yeah. So the minute that that gets delayed, something's going to get shortened or pushed back no matter what, either spring training, because they're still going to have pitchers and catchers, have some time, you know, in training once this deal gets done before they can decide when spring training is going to start. So, uh, unfortunately, it looks like there will be some delay to the season. Are they just so, taking a long holiday? Is that what this is, really? I don't. I well, like this is it. the dead time of the year anyway yeah, for right. for baseball. They yeah. they do. They they're a sport that is used to taking this time of the year off. You know, they structured it Must nicely nice. for themselves. Right. Must yeah, nice. totally. <laughs> and we, we, we take the holidays off uh, and then we'll be back sometime. I will, say, month spring. <laughs> I will say baseball does have the best schedule for off season. Uh, they're the only professional sport that doesn't have to play through Christmas. And I think that's pretty great. Yep. Big fan of that. Um, all right, let's check in on the Suns. They, I kind of mentioned this all. Oh wait, I haven't mentioned this yet. Just kidding. 
Um, so right now they have the second best record in the league. They're sitting at 22 and five and second place in the Western conference. They had a big overtime win over the trailblazers a couple days ago. Um, DA had a non COVID-19 related illness that actually really affected him. He, I said, I think he lost like 10 pounds. Wow. Um, and then he came back and rocked, uh, the trailblazers. He, uh, did great coming back from sickness. Chris Paul obviously was huge in that game, had a clutch jumper as the point God usually does. Um, the Must only thing like a nasty bout with stomach flu or something. Yeah, right? there's a lot yeah, to lose. Yeah. Yeah. There's some flu going around right yeah. now. Really, really don't want the details of that one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, they are supposed to match up with the Wizards tonight, but as I mentioned before, they Wizards just played the Kings, and the Kings are in advanced COVID protocol. So, um, they're right now there is no delay to the game. I'm prob I'm sure there probably won't be, <laughs> but it is a little concerning that the team the Suns are supposed to play tonight just played a team that is ravaged by COVID, and um, a lot of players and personnel are currently positive. So uh, that's a little concerning. <laughs> um, yeah. The whole world right now, right? It's yeah. a mess. Um, Sim similar thing with like the Cardinals game, right after they left. Yeah, some of their, all you know, the Rams, the Rams players come down with it i mean yeah it's uh it, it's it's unfortunately coming back and coming back seemingly in a, a bigger wave than we've seen in the past but um sports is gonna have to deal with it and like that scares me you know as far as coming in to play a team that hasn't had that they've been exposed but they haven't had that period of time yet to determine if they're uh positive or or anything yet because you know it's it takes what like three days or some in some cases for the positive test to come up so I, I yeah, that's it's just a bad situation all around, unfortunately. It is definitely a little bit concerning. Um, the game should go on as expected. The Wizards are fifteen and fourteen, so they're just by uh, just above five hundred. This should be a game easily winnable for the Suns. Um, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Hopefully, Can I just make a comment. Of course, if you turn your mic on, I did. Oh yay! The fact that the Suns' record is the Coyotes' record flipped exactly. <laughs> oh, I did not even notice that. 22 and 5, and the Coyotes are what? 5 and 22? 5 and 21. 21. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my wow. Gosh. Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Going to Anaheim, so Thanks. maybe 5 and 22 after. <laughs> I'm, so <sorry. laughs> I'm so sorry. You guys have to uh, watch that. We're all in this together, though. That's right. Um, so that's uh, what's happening with the Suns. With the Cardinals, they obviously lost to the Rams on Monday in a very not great way <laughs> on a <laughs> national stage. Um, not great to watch, even worse to feel. They are now tied with both Green Bay and Tampa Bay at 10 and 3. Are we worried about this? Well, I mean, they, they lose the tiebreaker to both of them. So right. they're actually sitting third in the NFC. That's Correct. that's a big deal. You want to buy, right? The, uh, the buy is so important in the NFL to, to rest your players rather than have to play every week. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of season left to play still. So things can happen. But yeah, you just felt it's crazy being on top of the NFL and suddenly you're third in the when NFC. When you tie, so. when you tie the other teams, right? That's that's yeah. the part that stinks. The bigger loss is DeAndre Hopkins and not right. knowing if we'll Oof. even get him back during the playoffs. We will talk about DeAndre a little bit more in depth coming up here. Um, obviously, he is hurt and he will be missing the next six weeks with a torn MCL. Who he will need surgery on. Um, so a lot of bad things happening <laughs> right now. <laughs> Uh, James Conner, who has been an absolute stud this season, he has 14 rushing touchdowns, which is second most in the league. He's only behind Jonathan Taylor, was also injured in Monday Night Football. Um, but good news for him is he is day to day. He had an MRI on Tuesday and nothing concerning popped up. He also did not practice today, but um, for now he is listed as day to day. And um, with everything going on, I'm, <laughs> this is obviously why we're talking about our topic of the day. Um how are you guys feeling right now is what I want to know. Are we okay? <laughs> are we alive? Not great. <laughs> well, not great. I mean, we talked about it before, like uh, having these two really good teams, right? And as an Arizona sports fan, you just couldn't help but feel like something bad was going to happen. Now, of course, that can happen in sports very easily. But the minute it does, it, it you kind of feel yourself going, ah, there it is. Yeah. Knew a new knew too much good was happening and everything was rolling around along for these two teams. You know? Yeah, we I we literally can't have anything nice. I tweeted from the PHNX Sports account yesterday. Why can't Arizona sports fans have anything nice? Um, and it's true, it sucks. <laughs> They're sort of sports fans sometimes. Christina in our comments saying, "Craig, do you need to visit Rita again?" 
You know, that's that's a good idea, actually. I, I, <laughs> I mean, maybe I should, you know what I should visit Mrs. Rita's again is probably before the NHL draft <laughs> or before the lottery, actually. See what Mrs. Rita says about the lottery. Oh, boy. All right. Um, before we get into our main topic of the day, I got to tell you guys about DraftKings Sportsbook. Football fans, I'm sure we all love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game, but with the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL, you're a winner once a single point is scored. New customers who bet just $1 on any team to score can win $100 in free bets. It's that simple. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get some skin in the game with new same-game parlays. Combine multiple bets from, from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code PHNX. Bet $1 on any team to score and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with promo code PHNX this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. 21 up only, Arizona only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details all right how about we get into our topic of the day which i'm sad and excited to talk about all in the same breath um Mm -mm. guys i'm pretty sure arizona sports are cursed and um i say this actually this is a topic that i wanted to talk about shout out to chirsten susell from uh phnx cardinals she and i tell or carpooled to the uh phnx tailgate for monday night football together And she actually told me about a story that she recently learned about, which I had no idea about. And it's the curse of Pottsville uh, on the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not sure if you guys have heard this. Have you heard it? I have not. Have you heard it? Nope. Oh, this is exciting. I get to take you. I get to teach you guys something. (laughs) All right. So a little bit of a backstory, which is why we're talking about this, because it's still relevant to this day. In 1925, the Pottsville Maroons played the then Chicago Cardinals And they beat the Cardinals for the final game of the year. In fact, this is when they didn't have the Super Bowl and just like the best record was the title winner. Mm -hmm. So technically the way they won the title that year, um, after they beat the Chicago Cardinals, they went on to play Notre Dame, the college team, in in an exhibition match in Philadelphia. And this really made the commissioner mad because Philadelphia... Um, they didn't have any rights to play in Philadelphia. And so the commissioner said, don't do it. They did it anyway. They beat Notre Dame. And then all the other owners of the teams got really upset about it. And so the NFL refused to give the title to Pottsville. And instead, they gave it to the Cardinals. However, the owner of the Cardinals back then said, we don't even want it. But then the team was bought by the Bidwell family, who still owns the Cardinals to this day. And Chirsten actually talked about this on her podcast earlier today. If you haven't checked out the PHNX Cardinals podcast, you have to go subscribe, download it, listen to it wherever you get your podcast. It's phenomenal. But I'll let Chirsten finish the rest of the story. They decided uh, we're just not going to accept the title and there's no real champion crown this year. Well, when the Bidwells bought the Cardinals, that all changed. They decided to claim the title and claim of themselves course. as 1925 champions, which really ticked the town of Pottsville off. And they have since cursed the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. And you could kind of point to some areas where, you know, fans at sometimes thinking, you know, we're just not catching a whole lot of breaks here. Is this curse something real? I had not heard about it before, but the story is certainly a fascinating one, whether you believe in curses or not. 1947 makes them the longest championship drought in professional sports. I know a lot of people don't know that when the Chicago Cubs eventually ended, I think there are 108 uh, championship drought, 108 year championship drought. The Cardinals then were bumped up next in line and are still waiting. Oh boy. Isn't it great? Yeah, <laughs> an Arizona great. sports fan. That's great. So, I mean, I mean, technically the, the Cardinals have really never won a Super Bowl because the Super Bowl, their title in 1947 really wasn't a Super Bowl title because the Super Bowl didn't start until the 60s. So sure. the Cardinals have been cursed by Pottsville. And I believe that the curse of Pottsville is still relevant to this day and is why the Cardinals are now seemingly cursed as they are having a glimmer of success. I I go both ways on this. On one hand, I agree, especially considering that this is a curse more on the Bidwells seemingly than on 
the Cardinals organization, right? When they took over specifically and they made the decision to accept this championship as, as legitimate instead of just, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. But when you actively pursue it, then yeah, that's, that's the egregious act in the film where the curse has now been set upon you by some sort of ancient, you know, spirit or whatever. Right. But I still have a problem believing that just considering that they won a championship in 1947, which I think that's the big thing about curses in sports is it, it, it mainly has to end with the team winning a championship, never winning again. Yeah. You and know, if and you then win a championship, do, it's broken, right? But right. technically it wasn't a Super Bowl, So but they, they still see, haven't won a Super Bowl. No, why, I'm, why, I'm why, does that, that. But why does that fly in football? We, we, we talk about championships in baseball, the NHL and the NBA going way back. But for some reason, when we go be up, Further than sixty six, suddenly everything's delegitimized <laughs> in football. No, 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 I don't get important. that. It's yeah. like th those are still championships. They won championships back right, then. Right. Now it's been a long time for the Cardinals. So maybe there was something else that happened after forty seven. But where is Pottsville, by the way? I don't oh, know. Okay, actually, I need to Pennsylvania. Okay. Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I did not I was, know that. I'm thinking like if if you want to lift this curse, don't you actually have to go to Pottsville and yeah. Return that banner. There. Well, it's like, it's like um, as Mo said, take that banner right down, yeah. take it back, let them have it, let them hang it in their town. Yeah. And, but uh, that also adds some layers to this because the only other time that the Super the, the Cardinals have been to the Super Bowl was in 2008, and guess who they played? Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh is the closest town to Pottsville. Mm. So and we know what happened in that game. It is the return. Or out of was this is why. Or out of okay, this is why I'm convinced that the curse of Pottsville is real because the only other time that the Super the Cardinals make it to a championship game is against the freaking Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. and we all know how that game ended. Okay. Heartbreak fashion. There's enough. There's enough. We need to go on that Steelers roster up. and see if anybody was born in Pottsville. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm convinced that the Cardinals reference. are cursed by Pottsville. So as you were all suggesting, I think we need to take the banner down. Mm -hmm. We need to give it back to Pottsville. We yep. just need to get rid of it. We need yeah. to sage the entire state park <laughs> stadium. Have, 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 Larry, have Larry Fitzgerald come <laughs> yeah. back and he'll go as, as a goodwill ambassador with Michael Bidwell to take it back to them. That's what I need to happen. Uh, something needs to Mac Mac Huff is in the comments saying he will never again use Heinz brand condiments. <laughs> I think that is genius. I'm with him. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm you have you. my full support on that, Mac. Um, but I'm serious. I really do think the Cardinals are cursed, and the curse of Pottsville is coming back now. Now that the Cardinals are really good and everything was going right for them, it's why DeAndre Hopkins has a torn MCL. It's why James Conner's ankles hurt. It's why J.J. Watt's shoulder is hurt. It's all of it. It's all, it's all of it. it. It's all Pottsville's fault, and we need to do something drastic to uncurse the Cardinals <laughs> yeah. because I want to watch them win the I Super Bowl I want to hear you float the idea so of staging bad. the stadium. Yeah. See what they say. <laughs> Listen, if anybody has Michael Biddle's number, if you're listening, if you let me in State Farm Stadium just like on a Tuesday, I will bring as much sage as I can possibly get my hands on it. I will sage... Right. All keep it under wraps. Stadium. Actually, don't tell the Bidwells. Yeah. Max just going to sneak yeah, in. Yeah, we'll okay. just do it. We'll just steal the banner and we'll if take it If the banner goes missing, them. don't look at us. It wasn't us. Um, right. <laughs> but I definitely think we need to return that banner to Pottsville. Something, I don't care what it is. It's kind of like the uh, Taylor Swift banner curse of the LA Kings. <laughs> um, yeah. The LA Kings cover up the Taylor Swift concert banner mm -hmm. uh, because they believe that they're cursed by Taylor Swift, which is actually one of my favorite curse stories in uh, it's, all it is sports. Good. It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> um, other curses in the valley besides that one. Uh, the Suns, the Suns had a, a nice little uh, coin flip <laughs> incident, and the oh. Suns also are cursed. If anyone is not aware of that, Derek. Uh, yes, uh, based on information, uh, uh, what happened is is that back in back in the day, they didn't have a lottery draft. It wasn't determined by ping pong balls, which I'm sure one day we'll scoff at that too. Um, but it was based <laughs> on a coin flip, right? And so the commissioner at the time, uh, the coin flip was down between uh, the worst record between the last two teams, and that was the uh, Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks, mm -hmm. our nemesis from the uh, World Championship Guys, game. Guys, everything Ooh. is so full circle. It's I so... swear to God. <laughs> okay. And so here's the thing is that uh, the controversy kind of lays in there a bit about, like, it doesn't seem like the Suns really did anything wrong, right? So that's the part of it that... Uh, uh, typically, a, a lot of the cursed stories have someone doing something, a team, an organization doing right. something like we talked about with the Bidwells. And this is just kind of the curse of of the coin flip, which allegedly didn't go the way it should have. The commissioner like caught it and then like flipped it. And uh, apparently, according to Espo, the Suns even held a contest on 
uh, what is it, the uh, Arizona Republic, yeah. to determine whether they should go with heads or tails. They let the public decide if they should pick heads or tails, Correct. you guys. Um, the number one pick that year was a young man named Lou Alcinder, which most of you know uh, him as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the talented actor from Airplane. And <laughs> oh. I, I will say that that was kind of one of the biggest mistakes ever uh, in the Suns history can, or, you know, and, and they just said that they've been uh, cursed not only to not win a championship, but they've been cursed by the dominant big man. They've been cursed by not getting the number one pick. So all of that seemed to end a bit when they got the number one pick and drafted Aiton. And so it felt like last year was something special. You know, it felt like all like, like the, like for some reason, the curse had been broken. Maybe it was the bubble. Maybe the bubble broke the curse. The bubble broke the curse. I don't know. <gasps> Cause they were kind of, you know, that, that was like, uh, they go into a, a situation where they should be contending for a playoff spot. They go undefeated and they still lose out on a playoff spot. So yeah. maybe, maybe that was the turnaround. I don't know, but, uh, hopefully that curse is broken because it doesn't seem like they did. They they didn't do anything to deserve that. It's yeah, a deserved they did lose to Milwaukee on, in the finals. They yeah. lost to Milwaukee in the finals. Um, Just to maybe, remind us about that coin flip. Okay, yeah. now I have another theory. You guys are going to have to stick with okay. me on this one. I love this stuff, you guys. I'm sorry if this is uh, <laughs> too much. Okay, so since it was the Milwaukee Bucks who was the other side of that team coin flip toss thing, right? Since the Suns lost to the Bucks in the finals last year, and the Suns also got the first pick in the overall draft a few years ago in DeAndre Ayton. I'm thinking now karma has been repaid. The curse has been complete. And this yeah. is the first year that the Suns have broken the twin cost that curse. That they're free of the curse. But I say that because aside from a few small injuries here and there and a weird illness with DA, the Suns have been looking incredible. Yeah. So I'm yeah. knocking on wood. Nobody comes you're really risking things right now. You're um, going to start a curse right now. No, 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 no I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, but I think, the, the I think the Suns, the curse of the Mac, <laughs> I think the Suns have broken the, to the, the coin flip curse. And I think this is the first year that they have uh, that they will play without the curse hanging over their head. So maybe they're winning the championship. I mm, I'm not going to say that because okay. I don't want people coming for me and saying that I jinxed it. But I'm saying things are on the right track. If you're right, one of the things that may have broken that curse may have been Monty Williams going into the Milwaukee Bucks uh, locker room like he did, even though there was some controversy about him making it about himself in some way. He went into the Bucks and was just very respectful and congratulated them on winning and. Maybe maybe that that act of diplomacy was enough to get this curse to go away. And I, I, I covered the Suns for ten years, and I, I you guys all remember these incidents. They're they're etched in Valley lore, right? The oh, no. Robert Ory infamous Robert Ory hip check of Steve Nash into the scorers table. Don't and even get somehow me started. The Suns come out on the worst end of the those suspensions, which yeah. I thought was just an abject failure of NBA leadership in that moment where you can say, okay, the letter of law says you can't leave the bench. So we need to make a judgment. Amari Stoudemire, Boris yeah. Diaw, you're out. Yeah. Or you could be a leader and say, you know what? That's not the right ruling here. Here's what needs to happen. And had that happened, I thought that team could have won the championship. I, I really <laughs> thought that they were championship material that year. And that team was so much fun to watch with Mike D'Antoni coaching, Steve Nash running the point. And it could have, validated everything that D'Antoni was saying about the future of the game and where it was going. Everyone was saying, oh, you can't win playing this way. They don't play enough defense. Well, they were that close, and yep. I, I think it was the league that kept them from winning it. That So that was tough to swell. You're the, out here breaking hearts, Craig. The I am very last right NBA game that I covered was in the conference finals against L.A. when Kobe missed and Ron Artest oh, God. got the put back. Oh. And again, I was just like, really? This I, I started to think at that point, you know, maybe this franchise really is cursed because I thought they had a win there too. Oh God. Everyone just cried. We're all yeah. collectively crying right now. Well, <laughs> I, I wrote Muscle about Pulse fans. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, but really listen, really. in the ninety three finals, it's not like the Suns were cursed there. They yeah, just no, lost to a better no, team. That's that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Uh but I I will say I wrote about a curse because the bigger thing with curses is they have to, you know, occur over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so years and years typically is really what like validates a curse existing. I felt like the Diamondbacks cursed themselves this year because they just were doing these fun celebratory TikTok videos and they decided to wear Baxter's head in on one of the videos, <laughs> right? Which like is Eduardo... just bad. It's like saying, oh, I was never mind. Never yeah, mind. you Keep don't going. want to, you want to say it, but yep. it's like it's like <laughs> actively saying on something like this that some 
kind of beloved character in is children's not... lives isn't real, right? Yeah. It's going out and, you know, again, just in wrestling, we have this thing called kayfabe, right? Protect the business. Don't show me Baxter's head on yeah. Eduardo Escobar, right? Keep the nostalgia <laughs> right. alive. There were probably so many upset children that saw Baxter's <laughs> head on Eduardo Escobar. <laughs> One Body? time, one time when I when there was I, a disconnect, like all, like, all these kids were just traumatized. Mommy, what one, happened to yeah. Baxter? Might as well just put it on a platter, Diamondbacks. Right, exactly. Yeah, and just <laughs> I, I said they went all Lord of the Flies, right? But the weird thing about that is after that they recorded the two longest, <laughs> or great. they had the longest losing streak in franchise history after that, and they set the MLB record for the longest road losing streak in modern era of baseball. There like, you go. You can't. Uh, and see, here's the thing: is a baseball season is long enough to validate a curse. It's 162 games. So uh, one mm -hmm. season is enough for me to go, maybe they are cursed, but maybe you shouldn't go wearing your mascot's head in fun, hey, you know, for clout. They no fun videos for clout. horrendous records after that. So I totally believe in the curse of Baxter. Is that what we're calling it? I, that's it. Yeah, the curse that's of Baxter. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, a former Baxter said he believes that that I'm right. So I have at least one Baxter in my corner you, telling me. You have the support me. of Baxter. That's I right. think that's all you need. Um, I totally believe in the curse of Baxter because of that. Uh, Mac in our comments, bringing up another baseball-related curse. What about the Buck Showalter curse? Showalter, d <laughs> get rid of him and win the World Series with a rookie manager out of the broadcast booth and – have never gotten back. See, that's a that's an interesting story in itself. I, I almost feel like the Diamondbacks uh, like sacrificed all future championships for all Arizona teams just to get that one right. But oh. <laughs> the biggest thing about it is that they, uh, you know, they 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 made this pivot, and there's a lot of people, not just Buck Showalter, that were mad about the pivot that they made from telling players and members of the organization that they were going to take a long time and build this thing right and build it from the ground up to one year later due to the attrition of season ticket holders going nah forget that we're going to trade for the biggest stars we can get and we're going to bring in the biggest free agents and we're going to try to make this team win now because we don't think this market is going to be patient and wait for us to get there and they won a championship, you know, though. they did they, they did, did win, win a championship. championship it's all worth they it did. Really that was a magical to. season and i got to cover incredible. that world series yeah. and that was oh, i mean with, with unit and kurt Schilling. that that th that three period three year period of time from ninety nine when they turned it around to the World Series that entire period of time as they yeah. kept adding pieces and getting better it was just the best time to watch uh, especially a new franchise like that you know it was it's just only exciting. time yeah. any only uh, title in the valley any only Coyotes time. curses that you can think of yes absolutely. oh boy oh boy here we go well I mean, I mean besides the entire organization being cursed right now uh... <laughs> you know and and they weren't when they came here look I know they couldn't get out of the first round of the playoffs when they were playing it. Then America West Arena, mm -hmm. but they were making the playoffs. They were a good team. Mm -hmm. There were there were a couple of powerhouse teams in the league at the time, so it's not like they were going to go on a championship run then anyway. But a couple things, and and Richard Burke, who's the owner that brought them here, has talked about this as the greatest mistake he made, trading Tay Musolani. That's that's the first mistake that they made. He he wanted uh, an American face mm -hmm. to market to this American market uh, in a, in a new market. So he brought in Jeremy Roenick, and that was a great decision because if you saw what JR did at the time, I mean, there was just not a more personable guy out there. He, he literally awesome. talked to every fan, and he was engaged. Yep. It wasn't just, okay, I got to do this. JR got to know everyone. He was unbelievable in that role. Yeah. But what Richard Burke has said is, I should have had them both. Mm. And then what we what we have accomplished, I don't know. They certainly would have gotten out of the first round. I don't know if they would have won cups with Detroit and Colorado being so good then, but – you could have gotten out of the first round and you probably could have ignited the fan base right then and there with yeah. a, a playoff run. So that was the that was the initial mistake when they first arrived, but they were still drawing well at America West. People forget this. They're like they were getting like fourteen thousand fans when they were at America West Arena. And then the economics of the league changed. Uh, payroll skyrocketed and suddenly you couldn't in this type of market, you couldn't stay in the same arena as an NBA team because the revenue streams weren't there. Mm. You just couldn't get the money out of the arena. So they made the decision to try and build at the old Los Arcos site in South Scottsdale. It was a great site. It was close to their fan base, and we can talk about that. We talked about that off air. Um, but there was a lot of wrangling with the city council. Residents wanted it. Yeah. City council was not as convinced. And, and mind you, they did their diligence. You have, to, you, you have to really think about those things. But the deal wasn't dead yet. And Steve Ellman, who Richard Burke had partnered with, wanted – to move them to Glendale. He wanted, and, and listen, Steve Ellman wanted 
to build Westgate. He didn't care about the arena and the team. Let's, let's be honest about it. He wanted to make his money out of real estate, and that all played out because yep. as soon as he did, he was gone, and he, he handed the bag to Jerry Moyes, who had no idea what he was doing running a hockey team. So I think about that pivotal moment in Coyote's history. If they had just stayed with the process in Scottsdale, Richard Burke might still own the team. He probably would. He told me this in an interview recently. Wow. That he wouldn't have sold the team had they stayed in Scottsdale. But he told Elman from the get-go, it's not going to work out there. You can't support it economically out there. And this was even when, you know, all the pie in the sky, oh, the West Valley's growing. It's mm. it's 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 blowing up. It's going to be a great place to live. The wealth base of the city, and I know people don't like to hear this, is on the east side. Yeah. And I did this story as well. Like 75% of the Coyotes premium season ticket holders live on the east side of town. That's the bigger that's thing. Where your, yeah. That's where your stadium, your, your arena should be. And, and you didn't put it somewhere centrally located where people could access it from all over the valley. You right. put it where it's an hour drive. And, for and I know that happens in other venue. cities like in Chicago. People will drive it. We just behave differently. You have to know yeah. your market. You can't say, well, they do it in Chicago, so why can't you do it here? Well, yeah. they don't behave the same way. Look at L.A. I have friends in L.A. that will actively leave for something that they're going to like three and a half hours before it starts <laughs> because they know two hours of it is going to be traffic. <laughs> yeah, and my response is I wouldn't I just wouldn't go to that. I'm not going to sit in traffic for two hours. Right. To go to that concert or whatever. Like, and the, and I the would freeway they opened up on the south side of South Mountain has helped. It's helped me anyway. I live in Gilbert, but yeah. people in like Mesa are, it doesn't help them, Tempe. That doesn't help them at all. I, I literally live tweeted one of my drives, probably breaking rules because I think text messaging was already oh, illegal. No. Cars, but, I, <laughs> but I live tweeted a drive across the gut of the city one day when it took me two hours to get to Gila River Arena from my house. It was just nuts. Oh, my God. That's insane. So I go back to that. Like when you look at what the Coyotes have done yeah. since they moved to Glendale – they had the three-year run when Dave Tibbett was the coach where they made the playoffs three straight years and they went to the Western Conference Final one year. Other than that, thanks to the expanded playoff format of the bubble, they made the playoffs one other year. But they made the playoffs four times since 2003. And then they got crushed by the abs. <laughs> and they got crushed by the abs in the first round. Yeah. Um. So I mean, are we calling Joe this – does this curse have a name? Can we I'm call it the curse, it of the curse of Glendale? Steve Elman. <laughs> the curse of Steve Elman. Um, He's the one that made the decision. I love that. I Elman's have curse. full support. But how do they break it? <laughs> They get out. They of have to get out of Glendale because that's where all the problems are stemming from right yes. now. And I also fully believe in the curse of Steve Elman now because you got me on this train. Um, the Coyotes have a lot of things going wrong right now. The biggest part, obviously, is the uncertainty of where they're going to be playing hockey because Gila River Arena is not looking like it's going to be an option for them. So thank you, the curse of Steve Elman, for getting us to this point. Hey, it <laughs> sounds like it's going to be over soon because they're not going to be in Glendale much longer. <laughs> But, but how does it play out after I that? Have I have no idea. And you know, I wrote that story yeah. this past it Sunday. It might not rectify itself. Uh, they might just be homeless. It's, it's messy. It's, it's messy. not a lot of great solutions. They there are very few good solutions. And I've been saying from day one that the only real solution is the Coliseum. But they have mm. to sink money and they have to sink time into that. And they haven't done it yet. So Here's buckle up, Coyotes fans. Go <laughs> check out Craig Morgan's article season. on the, Go Page. Nostalgia is a narcotic. And that's something that they should really consider when it comes to the coliseum because I completely agree people will go just to go just yeah. to go i would go just to go to sporting events because yep. because that's where i grew up watching the suns and i would go watch anybody in that in yeah that. the mercury was, were gonna play there um when the suns arena was getting renovated at Obviously, then COVID kind of ruined that. But I heard people were excited about that, going to go real. back to the Madhouse on McDowell and yeah. watch the Mark play. To me, that's a matter of, and I agree with what you guys are saying about um, uh, nostalgia. You need to know the market, right? Yeah. This ownership group is not from here. You need to understand the vibe of the city you're in. Especially and, right now. And I, I don't think that they fully grasp that the Coliseum yeah. could work as a short-term yeah. solution. Look, and I, I've heard some of the costs, like I've heard as high as a hundred million, but that's like all in. Like if you're going to do everything that yeah, you like need to do, yeah, like renovate it to be. As don't change updated. the seats. Leave sure. the seats orange. Who Jeez. cares? Sure. Who cares? Sure. It's it it harkens back to the sun's time while, right. while you're there. So right. decide what you need to do in the building to make it work, and then get to the Coliseum because this notion of playing in Prescott Valley and oh. Tucson. I mean, you want to talk about alienating a fan base and. Your players and your staff, for real. that's an absolute nightmare scenario that they should yeah. not even consider. Yeah. Um, NFL AZ Cardinals is asking us in the comments, would you guys want Kyler on a Madden cover, a.k.a. the Madden no, curse? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, no. <laughs> nah. No. Because that's no. that's such a different curse, too, and Kyler's so important to this team. that, Like, that's specifically a curse to that player 
and I don't want terrible things to right. happen. To Although Kyler Brady Murray was there. on the cover and he was fine, right? Yeah, but Brady overcomes all sorts of adversity. Yeah. He, he's, he's not human. He, he's not human, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's a he's resounding a no from the panel. Um, he's the goat. <laughs> he's the goat. Um, <laughs> uh, Matt Cobb oh, in the boy. comments saying, <laughs> stop. That is, oh my God. Leah, you are going to be fired. And we come full circle. Um, yeah, Matt Cobb in the comments saying, screw it. Play at Oceanside. Yeah. That would be a full circle say, moment. Let me tell you about Oceanside. It's up for sale. It could be knocked down as soon as the next oh, year. So my that's God, probably not a, an option. Either. They put an ice rink up downtown. We can go. <laughs> We were, have you bigger. seen the one in Westgate? Yeah. Although they, you know, the guys lose their business license, they can't even play there. Because... Oh, good lord! Yeah. Um, Gilbert uh, Arbio <laughs> saying, "Don't forget the 2011 Diamondbacks got hosed because Ryan oh, Braun was yeah. juicing." Yes, I hate Ryan Braun. Him and Robert Ori, the two oh, of wow. them, will put him up there. I can't believe we got both of them in one show. Screw both of those guys. <laughs> Um, and then and uh, NFL AZ Cardinals again saying the curse of Bobby Lane that Lions QB was treated at that time and said Lions won't win for the next 50 years <laughs> on the 50th anniversary of the Lions went 0 and 16. Yikes. That's hilarious. So, I mean, <laughs> I feel after this discussion that it's pretty safe to say Arizona sports are cursed. No. Oh, wow. How do you feel about that? What are your guys' notions? Do you think the teams here are cursed? I, I'm I'm told you guys when we started off air that I don't really believe in curses. I don't believe like if I'm writing about a game and I say something in a tweet that they're gonna win and then so they if lose, someone's throwing a no hitter, fault. you'll say no. It's a no hitter. Here's the thing though. Don't be that person. Derek. I won't. But that's the thing. Is deep down. So you about, do believe, right? I like logically, I don't want to believe. But then I also spent uh, an entire football game standing on a single tile. Because I thought that was helping the Cardinals win. Because once I moved there, good things started to happen for the team. So, so it, it was a tile in my house. I was at my house, and I just yeah. was standing watching. Okay, the game. so you can't tell me you don't believe in curses, right? Because you're contradicting yourself so hard right now. I'm very much a hypocrite. <laughs> Derek, what's your therapist name? Uh, <laughs> Doctor Lieben, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so do you believe the the teams are cursed? I don't believe in curses, but man, I don't know. I do some of the same things. Like if a, if a goalie's uh, posting a shutout, I don't say the word, yeah. and I, I get on anybody who does. So you know, maybe maybe there's a little bit to it. You wonder sometimes, right? Why do some franchises just have the string of bad even as a Cubs fan, them? you don't believe in curses? I feel like <sighs> this is like contradictory to your entire existence. Yeah, it's like you were raised Probably on curses. Is like a, it's part of your and, and when you bring when we bring this back full circle to goats, then yeah. <laughs> no, Leah, it, see? don't <laughs> do it, Leah. I swear to God, uh, do not put that picture up there. <laughs> No! That's how oh we're my ending God. the show. All right. The um, okay, maybe, maybe the curses are real. Maybe, are. maybe curses are real? I'm, I'm not going to close the door on that possibility. All right. Okay. Greg's let's, not let's closing the way. door. You don't want to curse yourself. Derek is a contradictory <laughs> human being. I fully am full the way, all the way in on curses being real. I think we She's need to. very anti-goat, too. I'm anti-goat, and I'm full on, on the curses. I think we need to sage all the arenas in the valley. I think we need to steal some banners. I think we need to do some prayer circles. I don't know, but. There's some work to do. We got some work to do, you guys. Um, if you happen to be out at a game and you see us there, don't even ask why we're there. Yeah. You already know. Don't ask why we're carrying the championship banner. Hey, Mac loves beams and gifts, too, so <laughs> let's create one of her saging arenas around. Yeah. We should need to create one of her saging all of the arenas in the Valley. Um, yes, Robert York. Unfortunately, Craig is a Cubs fan. Yes. Matt Cuff also saying, I had to stay in the shower for the entire fourth quarter of a Hail Mary Of the Hail Mary game. game. Yeah. yeah. You're the welcome, Mary Sun game. Devils fans. Thank, Thank you, you, Matt Cuff, wow. for making that Thanks happen. For doing We've that, talked yeah. with Mac about his commitment. That's an iconic sacrifice. moment uh, uh -huh. that we will forever thank you for um if you think DraftKings sportsbook had some uh props on uh if arizona sports are cursed i was, what do you I was gonna ask that earlier like can you bet on this uh, i think you should be able to bet on if uh, arizona yeah. sports are cursed or not like and how long how much 200 longer? maybe because it's pretty close to being accurate what would the over under of how many years left of the arizona cardinals curse the pottsville curse would be set at how many more years do you think you have to suffer this curse it's well, when did it start? 22? 1924. 24. 24. Yeah. Maybe a hundred year curse. Oh, geez. Maybe. 2024. I hope it's before that. Um, I hope it's already yeah. done. Well, although that uh, curses aren't something you can actually bet on the DraftKings Sportsbook <laughs> app, there are plenty of other things that you can bet on that will actually win you money. Don't forget to use code PHNX when you sign up. And if you bet on an NFL, uh, NFL team to score, hello. And if they do, you'll win $100 in free. Free bets. Uh, that sounds like a pretty sure thing. I feel like scoring happens a lot in the NFL. Oh, you're yeah, wrong. Yeah. Um, so just make sure you use code PHNX at sign up. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're in our comments, thank you for your amazing comments. They really made us laugh and helped us out a lot. We appreciate you watching and hanging out with us. If you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, leave us a five-star rating and a review. We really appreciate those ratings. They help us out a lot. If you're listening to this as an audio version, don't forget you can watch us live on YouTube once a week. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell, you'll get a notification so you never miss a thing. Thank you again for watching. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Derek, for this Got awesome it. episode. Um, I'm fully in my unhex the teams mode now. So <laughs> I feel like this go is gonna burn some sage. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna go burn some sage. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday, and we will see you next week. I thought Leah was gonna bring in one more goat. No goats. <laughs> <laughs>